Hey everybody, this is Robert Carlson with Brave Defender Training Group. I just want to take a few moments of your time and discuss within the tactical medicine world and the TECC or Tactical Emergency Casualty Care Program specifically, the first phase of care. Now it's important that as responders we understand all three phases of care and it's critical that we know which phase of care we are in at any given moment in time because failure to properly identify the phase of care that you're in could potentially cost you or your patient their life by providing the wrong medicine at the wrong time. So the first phase of care and the one that is the most important for first responders, law enforcement, military to recognize is going to be the direct threat care phase. Now what sets direct threat care phase above all of the other phases and is the defining characteristic above direct threat care from indirect threat or evacuation care is going to be whatever the hostile threat is what is still active and still present. So there is still an ongoing threat to your life and the life of your patient. Now, oftentimes we have a tendency to think of this as a hostile threat, such as an individual with a gun, but this threat can be anything. This could be an environmental threat, such as a fire, chemical, hazardous materials, whatever. Just whatever poses a, a risk to your safety or the safety of your patient is what we're gonna define as the threat. However, in law enforcement, this is largely going to be some sort of hostile threat, such as a individual that is actively trying to, to cause harm to us uh, or other individuals. And so that threat is still present. And so because of that, that's what sets this phase of care in, in, over all of the others and is gonna largely dictate what the appropriate medicine is going to be. Now, because this is that first phase of care and we're still dealing with that threat, one of the other defining characteristics is going to be, we are still going to be at the initial point of injury or what we call on the X. We haven't had time to move to a position of better cover or concealment yet. So this is gonna encompass all of the actions that take place at that initial point of injury. And because this is that first phase of care, and we either may be our, by ourselves, or we may be only having a, a small number of officers that are present, this is going to be largely focused on self-aid and self-recovery. Uh, self because there is still an ongoing hostile threat, if we have any other officers that are involved, they are largely going to be focused on dealing with the tactical problem. And so this is why it's critical that as law enforcement officers, we understand and know how to apply tourniquets and other medical interventions on ourselves, because we either may be alone or our partners may be tied up with other problems. So th that is what defines the direct threat care phase. So now that we understand which phase of care that we're in, with at the direct threat care phase, we have to understand our first, our biggest, and our most immediate priority is going to be to mitigate the threat. Whatever threat caused these injuries, we have to deal with that problem first. We cannot be attempting to deal with a medical problem while there is still an ongoing tactical problem that is present. If we get tunnel visioned on injuries, either our own or on another officer's, we may be potentially opening ourselves up to greater harm by allowing that, that suspect to continue to man uh, maneuver on us and be able to provide additional damage. So bullets are going to be the best medicine at this phase of care. Now, this is gonna largely dictate based upon whether you're by yourself or whether you have other officers that are with you. If by yourself, we're gonna to have to temporarily ignore that, that injury and we have to deal with the, the threat first. We can't be providing our own treatment if we still have somebody that's involved in an active gunfight with us. Now, if we have other individuals with us, uh, other officers or other responders that are with us, we're gonna allow the situation to kind of dictate what the best response is gonna be. It may be that the wounded individual has to participate in the tactical problem. So both the wounded and the unwounded officers are gonna to have to deal with that tactical threat. Or the unwounded officer can deal with the tactical threat while the wounded officer focuses on doing their own medicine and doing self-aid and self-recovery. You have to make a decision based upon your specific situation as to what the best course of action is gonna be. Now, because we were on that point of injury or that, that X, 
it's imperative that we want to try and maneuver off of that X if possible before we start doing any medical interventions. We want to try and avoid providing medical treatment out in the open, especially if there is still an ongoing hostile threat or risk of continued hostile threat. Now, this is not a long, complicated movement. It's just a short movement to get to a more advantageous position than where we previously were, behind some sort of cover or concealment or at least getting off of that X. Now, the situation is going to dictate, do we put a tourniquet on prior to the movement or do we wait until the completion of it? That's just largely going to be based on the injury that we face as well as the distance that we're trying to move. We're going to have to make that decision based upon the scenario that we're facing. Also, in direct threat care phase, it's critical that we understand the only medical treatments that we are going to be providing at this time is going to be to control any major life-threatening arterial bleeding to the extremities, such as the arms and the legs. And we're only going to be handling that at this point through the use of a tourniquet. Any other method of treatment is simply going to be too time intensive and too manpower intensive to be effective at this point in time during direct threat care phase. Plus, if we're talking about self-aid and self-recovery, the only medical treatment that we can do on ourselves in order to control that bleeding effectively is going to be through the use of a tourniquet. So once we identify that phase of care, we have to understand that the only treatment we're really going to be doing during that initial phase is going to be applying a tourniquet to the extremities in order to resolve any life-threatening arterial bleeding. So now we understand how to identify direct threat care phase over all of the others. We still have an ongoing hostile threat that poses a threat to ourselves or our patient. We're on the X and probably going to be centered on self-recovery and self-aid. This is why it's so critical that we have to know how to apply tourniquets on ourselves and be practiced in that, that skill. And then the only thing that we're going to be dealing with initially is going to be solving that tactical problem, creating a safe environment for us to work in. Once we've resolved that tactical problem, then we can go ahead and on focusing on the medical issue through the use of a tourniquet to control any massive arterial bleeding to the extremities. Once we've resolved those problems, we can then move on to more complex medical interventions in a later phase of care. But during direct threat care, this is what we're primarily going to be focused on. I appreciate uh, everybody's time. Hopefully everybody took something from this. If there's anything else that we can do for you, please don't hesitate to contact us at bravedefendertraining.com. Thank you.